we're going to do now is the really the focal point of our, of our day today is uh, Curtis Clark is the uh, fire marshal for Pickens County and um, Curtis gets credit for, for doing these type of things. We do too. We offer continuing ed credits for uh, insurance agents and for adjusters. So if you are one of those two highly exalted positions, please leave your name and your, your agent number so we can give you credit for it. And I'm going to turn the program over. After we do the fire demonstration, don't everybody leave because then what we'll do is draw for all the uh, raffle prizes. We got some really nice stuff, so, uh, and, and I hope the commissioner doesn't win anything this year. <laughs> yeah, I almost didn't get a ticket, but you know, he won a big, big string TV last time, so, uh, uh, Curtis, come ahead. You start. <laughs> Andy, I appreciate you asking me again. Um, the uh, Global is, is a great benefit to the county. We're glad to have you here in the county. Uh, glad for all you do to help us out on fire scenes. Uh, it has been a, it continues to be a privilege to work with. Thank you, sir. Um, Feelings mutual. First of all, I'd like to see who we got here. Uh, how many uh, insurance agents do we have here? Do we have any? Oh, okay. We got some people that deal with insurance claims. Uh, how about builders? Do I have any builders here? <laughs> got one. Okay. We got one builder. Okay, how about inspectors? Any kind of building inspector? Okay. All right. Um, first of all, let's talk about the history, the more recent history that we have had in this country of fire deaths. During the week of October the 5th through the 11th, there was 32 fire deaths in this country in single family residences. That is a lot. Of those, 16 of them were over the age of 65. Four of them were under the age of 14. Now last week, wasn't quite as bad. We had 26 fire deaths. Of those, seven were over the age of 65. And five were <coughs> under the age of 14. This year alone, 1,781 people have perished in single-family residence fires in this country. There's got to be some way to help with this. This has long been our prime source of help to reduce this, and it will continue to be. This is one of the greatest things that ever was mandated to be in a home. It, it's simple. It's inexpensive. This one costs less than a hamburger meal at McDonald's would cost you. Now you can buy them that cost up to $75. It'll do everything but cook your lunch. Uh, but, and they're all good. They all do the same thing. They detect smoke. But fire alarms are not enough. Fire alarms will alert you. They will help you get out of the house or let you know you should be getting out of your home. But what if you can't hear it? What if you're that 65-year-old that's got two hearing aids and they take them out at night so they can sleep? They're not going to hear this. Um, there's other more expensive alarm systems. There's, there's actually systems that will vibrate at a lower tone so that you, the, the deaf can even hear them. Um, but they're very limited as to what they'll do. Half of those 65-year-old deaths in the last two weeks, those individuals were found in their path of egress. They just did not have time to get out. And that is why these exist. Everybody knows what that is, right? That's a sprinkler head. Okay, there's... I'm going to let you come out and look at these. Look at this one. You're looking at them. This is a recessed residential head. It's made to go in your house. It's very unobtrusive. All you see is that little white circle. Um, Back in 2012, the International Fire Code, as adopted by the federal government, made it 
um, the code that all new homes built after January the 1st, 2012 would have sprinkler systems in it. It is a national code. Unfortunately, Georgia, the legislation in Georgia and their infinite wisdom took it out of the code for the state of Georgia due to various reasons, uh, mainly because it was passed in the time when residential home construction was so stressed and adding a cost of just a little bit to a home they feared would limit the building and selling of, of homes. We're hoping and, we're, and as a member of the Residential Fire Sprinkler Coalition, we're working desperately with our legislatures to try to get this to work. It's going to be an uphill battle. But they have so many things. Why do we need fire sprinklers? Well, one, they provide that extra time for occupants to get out of the house. They give them the extra few minutes of low smoke, low heat to exit a building. They save property. You know, lives are the primary. That's why it's on top. Lives are the priority here. But they save property. They reduce the amount of damage. They reduce the amount of water damage in reference to what we would bring. A standard sprinkler head puts out 22 gallons a minute. When we bring a fire hose in, it's 175 to 250 gallons a minute. We're moving a lot more water. If you have paperwork, if you have personal items, if you have collectible items, or just your normal belongings, would you rather have them wet or burn? Uh, they do say they do say, and they're not made just for commercial buildings. They're great for commercial buildings. For commercial buildings, they're designed to save the property that's in the building and to give people an adequate time to get out of that building, especially in uh, places of assembly where you have large crowds. Uh, they save on insurance costs. Insurance agents that are here know this uh, because they result in less damage, less repair costs that are passed on to the insurance, and thus they provide for a lower rate base and they save the building owners insurance costs because of this. A normal fire extinguisher system installed in a new building could pay for itself in less than three years in just insurance savings. It's, it's a great thing to install. Um, there's different systems. There's what NFPA calls the 13 system. That is a commercial system with steel pipe the whole nine yards. There's a 13R. Now this system is designed for residential. It's, you know, a lot of people will see it. It's in an orange pipe. Uh, it's just different and it's a lot less cost for residential apartments and other residential type occupancies. Then NFPA provides a 13D system. D standing for domestic. These systems are installed in your homes and they're installed off your domestic water system. The same water that's passing through your faucet in your kitchen is also going through the same pipes that are have your sprinklers on. Very economical to have installed during new construction. Um, again, if you look at one of the heads, it, it's just slick top white on it. Very, very unobtrusive, designed to go in high-end homes. And they work just as efficiently as the others, although you never see that head stuck down there unless it's engaged, unless it happens. Um, maintaining the system in a home is almost no cost. It's there, it stays there all the time. As long as you have water in your domestic system, it's going to work. Uh, very low maintenance. I have them in my house. Um, the uh, it's just a, a, a safe way to give that extra amount of time to get out. Every minute counts when you're trying to egress and smoke. And smoke detector's fine. It's going to wake you up and tell you there's smoke in the house, but it's not going to slow that fire down. It's not going to keep it from smoke from building down and causing you with breathing problems. 
are causing the visibility so you don't see your way out, it's going to alert you. By no means take this as I'm downgrading this. This is one of the greatest things ever made as far as saving lives in residential houses or commercial buildings. But we need more. And what we're going to do today is show you an example of what two rooms that are same size, they're equally equipped. We're going to start a fire in the trash cans of each room. The first room we're going to burn is non-sprinkled. It does have a smoke alarm in it. We're going to allow that burn, the room to burn for uh, three, three and a half minutes. That is shorter than our response time. Most time in, in the county here where we run in a response time is somewhere between three and eight minutes, depending on where you're at and how close to the fire state you are. And it's, it's just an average. It can be longer, it can be shorter. Uh, really depends on where you're at. So what we're going to try is, uh, as a midway burn, show you how intense a small trash can fire can get if it's not controlled. And we're going to have the fire guys out here, which I really appreciate coming. They're from Bethany Salem Fire Department. We have one guy here from Pickens County. Um, they're going to extinguish that side, and then we're going to light the other one. Now the other one is protected by a Rapid response, 155 degree um, sprinkler head. It's off. We have a garden hose run to it to show that it's it's just normal water. Um, and you're going to get to see how that works. Uh, things to look for. Uh, watch how the sprinkler head reacts. You'll have to watch it because it will not be very long after the smoke detector goes off that you'll see that head pop very quick. It does not take very long for it to get 155 degrees on the ceiling with just a trash can fire. Fire temperatures in the other side will reach somewhere 12 to 1400 degrees at ceiling height before it finally melts that plastic and rolls out. But uh, just look for it. All fires don't burn the same. I can't guarantee you that we can even start a fire in that trash can. Uh, sometimes sometimes they don't cooperate. Uh, you know, we're fires, we don't start fires. Uh, but the two rooms may be different. They may burn at a different rate or a slower rate or a faster rate. It all depends on weather, humidity, and just what we're trying to burn. So um, just consider that. You know, I'm going to be out there in front. I will, you know, we have the noise of the fire truck, so it's going to be a little harder for you to hear me when we get out there. But just, just be observant and watch what going on. Watch how the fire develops in the first unit. How it burns, how the smoke level builds down. Watch how high that smoke is. That's what you would be breathing if you were standing up in there. That's why people don't make it out. And then watch the other one. We'll be amazed. Are we all ready? I know, I think. He's just taking a normal lighter, lighting a fire in the trash can with paper, no stuff in it, no flammable fluid. Like I said, they vary on how they burn. 
This one's trying to be stubborn. Right. 
head is actually leaking a little water and it's running down across the glass bulb and it's keeping it cool. <laughs> but we'll get a big enough fire here in a minute that we don't have to worry about. Like I said, fire or not, good start fire. <laughs> Yeah. 
know it popped in five minutes. building any further. Stay in approximately the same size. Sprinkler head turn off. Sprinkler head will never turn off until you cut the water off. Okay, so it's physically has to go. 